today is Read Aloud is called A Healthy Human Body. We're going to review the functions of our body systems that we learned about and also learn ways that we can help to make sure that our body systems continue to run smoothly and stay healthy. Let's take a look at some vocabulary words in our read aloud today. The first word is calories. Units used to measure the amount of energy in foods. The energy in food. Recovery. A return to health. And the last word is windpipe. The air passage from the throat to the lungs, the trachea. Listen carefully to find out the meaning of the word calories, how we burn calories, and why this is important to staying healthy. Let's begin. Take a look at this, boys and girls. What are you looking at? Yes, you're looking inside a human body with all of its many complicated parts. Can you find the stomach and the intestines? Who sees the kidneys and the bladder? Today we're going to review some of the things that you learned about the human body and its network or arrangement of important systems. Let's start with the system you learned about last. Which system helps you sweat and pee? Yes, the excretory system. And who remembers other terms or words for sweat and pee? Yes, perspiration and urine. Have you tried using those terms with your family and friends? Which system is responsible for processing your food into nutrients that your body can use and getting rid of waste that it doesn't need? Yes, the digestive system. Raise your hand if you can tell me the name of the tube that carries food from the mouth to the stomach. Great job, the esophagus is your food tube. We didn't talk about it, but there is another tube right beside it called the windpipe. It leads to your lungs. Can anyone guess what travels through your windpipe from your mouth to your lungs? is something else that the body needs to live. Right, air. Look at the picture of the human body in this image. Look at all the bones that make up the skeleton. What's that system called? That one was an easy one, wasn't it? The skeleton is part of the skeletal system. Here's another easy one. What system do muscles belong to? Yes, the muscular system. The skeletal and muscular systems work together to help you move. Nerves are part of your nervous system. The nerves run like highways across every part of the body, traveling up the spinal column all the way to the brain. We also have the circulatory system. Don't confuse the nerves with veins and arteries, the tubes that carry blood through the body. The nervous system and the circulatory system look similar in pictures. That's because blood covers a lot of territory too. We've talked about nutrients and the way they travel through your blood to support your body systems. Without blood, these important substances would have no way to nourish your body. The circulatory system circulates or moves your blood. You know that each body system performs a separate function and that each system is made up of organs. Organs are made up of tissues and tissues are made up of cells. From largest to smallest, the order is organs, tissues, then cells, which are the smallest. Let's think about skin as an example. Moving from the smallest part to the largest, skin cells combine to form skin tissues, and those tissues combine to form the skin as we see it. 
That's the way the human body works. It is important to keep your cells, tissues, organs, and body systems all running smoothly. You can do that in many different ways. We've talked about the importance of making healthy food choices. Food gives you energy to grow, breathe, move, fight germs, and heal. Some foods have more nutrients in them than others. Choose a variety of foods, especially those high in nutrients. Choose frozen yogurt over ice cream. Choose a skinless chicken breast over fried chicken. A baked potato instead of french fries. A glass of low-fat milk instead of a chocolate milkshake. Balance your daily diet with several servings of grains, fruits, and vegetables, and smaller portions of dairy, meat, and eggs. Remember to eat only a few sweets and fats. And don't forget that fresh food will give you lots more vitamins and minerals than packaged ones. So head for the produce aisle or a local farmer's market and stock up on kale, broccoli, and pears. Besides eating a well-balanced diet, what other ways can you keep your body healthy? Exercise or staying active can help you maintain a healthy body weight. When you exercise, your body uses energy from the food you eat. The amount of energy that food provides to the human body is measured by calories. Food labels list the number of calories or the amount of energy in packaged foods, telling you how much energy is stored in them. You should eat enough food each day to provide your body with about the same amount of energy that it uses up during the day. If you eat too much and don't exercise, your body will store the extra food energy as fat. If you don't eat enough to satisfy your body's needs, your body will use its stored energy and you may lose weight. You are burning energy all the time, even when you are sleeping, but your body uses much more energy to exercise than it does to sleep. If you weighed 100 pounds, you would burn about 40 calories just by standing still for 30 minutes. But if you walked for 30 minutes, you would burn about 120 calories. You would use up three times more energy by walking as you would by standing still for the same amount of time. Here's a puzzle for you to solve. There are about 160 calories in a snack size bag of potato chips. If you burn 120 calories by walking for 30 minutes, about how much longer would you need to walk to burn up all the calories in that bag of chips? What type of exercise do you think might burn the calories even faster than walking? Exercise keeps your heart and lungs working well, fights off illness and disease, and builds strong bones. Make exercise a daily part of your life. Walk and cycle instead of getting in a car. Climb stairs instead of taking an elevator. Swim, play soccer, take karate or gymnastics lessons, or shoot hoops with your buddies. All of these are good forms of exercise. Choose what you enjoy and have fun. Keeping clean is another important part of staying healthy. There are many types of germs that can make you sick. Bacteria, the tiny one-celled creatures that Anton van Leeuwenhoek studied, are one of the most common types of germs. Bacteria are everywhere. They are an important part of nature, and most bacteria are not your enemies. In fact, many bacteria live in your gut and help you digest your food. But millions more live on your skin, and some of them may be harmful. That's why it's important to wash your hands often and well. Wash them throughout the day, especially before eating. Besides hand washing, make sure that you clean every part of your body too. Take frequent showers and baths, shampoo often, and keep your fingernails short and clean. 
Brush your teeth regularly to get rid of old food and germs that feed on it. Use floss to keep your gums healthy and get rid of food stuck between your teeth. Regular toilet habits are a sign of good health. Most of the time, you don't have to think too hard about these daily habits, but sometimes your body reacts and lets you know that you need to take extra care. Sometimes feces become hard and dry, making them difficult to pass. That is called constipation. With diarrhea, the opposite thing happens. Feces become loose and runny and may signal an infection in the intestines. When waste systems do not function well, drinking lots of water usually helps. Make sure to listen to your body and the nerve signals that it sends to your brain. Don't put off using the bathroom when you need to go. How many of you wake up feeling tired in the morning? Has anyone ever asked you, did you get up on the wrong side of the bed? If you're tired or grouchy when you wake up, that may mean that you're not getting all of the rest that your body needs. Most seven or eight year olds need about 10 or 11 hours of sleep each night. As you sleep, damaged body cells and tissues are repaired and replaced. If you're sick, sleep will help you speed up your recovery or return to health. Eating well, exercising, keeping clean, and getting enough rest are all good ways to help your millions and billions and trillions of tiny cells working properly. You should also make sure to have regular checkups with a doctor or other healthcare professional. I have loved sharing my knowledge of health and nutrition with you. Your body is yours alone, and you alone have the power to take care of it your whole life. Now that you know what to do to keep it in good condition, I hope you will treat it as well as you would any one of your favorite machines. I'm sure you'll agree that you'll never find another machine quite as amazing as the human body. Here are some discussion questions. Feel free to pause the video in order to allow time to think and discuss. What are calories? What does it mean to burn calories? How do you know how many calories are in the food to eat? If you eat about 2,500 calories a day every day for a month and only burn about 2,000 calories per day, will you be more likely to lose weight or gain weight? Why? What are some ways that you can prevent germs from infecting your body? If the cells of one of your organs are diseased, can you still have healthy tissues in a healthy organ? Sometimes people laugh and talk while eating and they begin to choke on their food. They cough it up and say, it went down the wrong way. What do they mean? Pretend that you are sitting outside on a hot day reading a book. What body systems are at work as you read? 